Okay, hi and welcome to Story to Satori. I have, I'm so very glad to have Pooja Talesara for uh, my guest today. And she's a wonderful person from Singapore who is a coach, a podcaster, a mother of two, as well as uh, she is a, uh, she keeps going around the world training and coaching. So also an OD specialist. So I would like to hear from her how her journey has been so far and what made her to get into coaching. So welcome Pooja and uh, uh, please let us know and tell, tell us our story. Uh, we are eager to hear. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janvi. Really a uh, privilege and honor to be on your chat show. Uh, very interesting question because, uh, and it's good to reverse the role because as a coach, often I get into asking people's story. Yes. <laughs> so it's good to reverse the role. Uh, so what got me uh, started into leadership coaching uh, yes, there is a big story about it, um, mm. the driving force behind it. So it's a mix of my personal as well as the professional, uh, but largely it is it is the personal driver, mm. the which propelled me into leadership coaching. Mm. So to give you a brief background, uh, Janvi, I'm a first professional in my family uh, because we come from a traditionally uh, business setup. So okay. I was the first person to go and venture into the, wanted to do and try out hands into professionalism. And uh, HR was an obvious choice because, um, because that's where, you know, I felt like uh, I could connect with people. Mm. And so I wanted to do something wherein I could connect and I could bring in that change and uh, help people to achieve their great uh, potential and unlock their potential and achieve the great abundance as they say. So uh, while I was doing uh, HR line, HR role, mm -hmm. there was a lot of things which was happening, uh, you know, behind the background with respect to, I used to do with respect to coaching, maybe coach my, uh, my team members or uh, I used to work a lot with the young people uh, in the career development planning. Mm -hmm and okay. employee engagement. So those are the two initiatives wherein um, professionally I was doing a lot and it was a mix of my experience is a blend of corporate mm -hmm. as well as uh, the consultancy environment. So okay. both of this uh, combined together, I was doing coaching. But mm -hmm. as I told you, um, the coaching is something which has an offshoot a lot from my personal story as well. Okay. So uh, I lost my dad uh, Pretty early, when I say early, it was uh, because he was very hell and hearty, and we didn't expect him to uh, really leave us. And like you know, uh, mm -hmm. he was forty when we uh, when he passed away, and later on, my mother she was diagnosed with cancer. So the journey of losing my dad and my mother, my brother was ten years younger to me, is ten years younger to me. So my mother handling the entire spectrum right from my dad passing away to her. I, I, I don't like to call her to be a cancer survivor, but rather I call her as a conqueror. <laughs> so, you know, conquering that um, the cancer thing and in the entire thing I could see and that's where it opened my eyes that leadership is not only with respect to the corporate environment what we speak about. Hmm. Leadership is something which we really demonstrate day in and out. And that's what I saw my mother doing it. It was a lot of her personal mastery, her her inner control over herself that yes, I have to uh, ensure I have to pass on this thing for my kids. And that's where it was an aha moment for me. That's where I found the mojo of my life. That yes, personal leadership and personal mastery is something wherein I want to uh, dedicate and this is where my passion is. So my entire model itself is based on inward excellence, leads to outward excellence. How old so were you start. at that time, Pooja, when your father passed away? And uh, so can when you tell my us father, you know, the age, age, because you know, we would like to know when do children really make these kinds of, uh, you know, um, something happens and circumstance environment and then you make one decision in life, you know, unconsciously. And then probably you realize it later in life when you got into HR. But how old were you when your father passed away? And when your mother also so, got cancer? 
yeah so when my father uh so janvi first of all um this were the two main drivers but yes there was mm. a lot of series of incidents which got me into it mm-hmm. as i told you uh, i i'll come to your question that when my father passed mm-hmm. away but yes. i'm just right now the um, flow of thoughts um so as i told you that i was the first professional in my family mm-hmm. so uh like when i was been um, so we were from rajasthan and when i came to mumbai so my mother uh, and my dad they didn't know english when i was in school the very first day when i had to go and i was speaking hmm i was like oh god i i, I just i just can't uh, you know i i i froze hmm. and i was so passionate to go and speak in public speaking and everything but i couldn't because of that language barrier and that's where when my mother was she was like when is he propelling me that there is nothing Sorry, just to say, it's my daughter. She's at home, and yeah. today <laughs> say hello because without kids, you know, this world is not complete. Yeah. We so, need to say hi. it's my daughter. Probably she yeah. just wants to come and say hi. Okay, hi, hello. <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> yeah, her name is Yashna. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright. So I'll just probably get her once on the stay, and you just let her say hi so that she goes. And yeah. She yeah. Of course. All right. Thank you, Yashna. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, sorry mm-hmm. for that, but I think that's the yeah, challenge. What that's being, okay. That's uh, perfect. Yeah, being yeah. a mother and being an mm-hmm. <laughs> entrepreneur and professional. All right. Uh, so, so when on the stage, I I couldn't speak, and that's why when my mother she said that you know you have to not look at your limitations, you have to look at the possibilities, what mm. you can, and so that seed of like you know uh, that you can't be everything, but whatever is is there, your um, your strengths you need to really explore it mm. you need to look at the possibilities and opportunities so that seeds have been sown uh, you know sl- sl- th- those were planted at that mm. time itself and coming to what was my age when my dad passed away i was um, 22 22 okay yeah young right that is a you understand yeah i was 22 yeah. just passed mm-hmm. out for my mba doing my first uh, assignment and that's when he passed away i'm really sorry so uh janvi the seeds were planted uh all the small small incidents like for me it was a big victory mm. uh of being able to overcome that fear the fear of not being able to speak because of the language limitation so it was a victory that when i i could master english and when i could go on the stage and i went on to go to the inter school competition various levels and today i have two podcaster show as well right So it was a long journey for me, small bits and pieces. Every day, I think when you are overcoming your fear, and every day uh, when you f- the transition from fear to focus yes. has been slowly and steadily. But the major drivers were the life uh, events when it happened. Mm. Yes, it is an amazing story. You know, I mean. Uh, my dad passed away when i was much late i mean very uh, i think uh, it was around 7 8 years back and i was pretty old and i could understand and he was old too and uh, it was something which i think it's a natural process but for you it's 22 is a young age and where you really understand but then uh, but yet you are not able to take in that emotional uh, loss right and the uh, complete loss of uh, and uh, as you explained Uh, it is so amazing that you learned at that young age uh, what it is to um, to take a lead in that in that situation as you said rightly you know you the seeds were sown by your mother and that is amazing you know your mother is kind of hats off to her that she herself would have gone through such a big loss and she being not well yet she saw to it that the seeds were sown in you and your brother that you know we need to you know actually rise from this occasion and 
handle this, handle ourselves and handle the whole situation. So I wanted to ask you, um, and this got you to your journey about, you know, uh, how can I handle myself and uh, how can I handle the one is the loss, one is yourself and uh, not just handle yourself but somewhere, you know, you got that, um, uh, there was a spark in you of course but then that got ignited and uh, you saw that you have the potential to be a winner in the situation, not just kind of uh, manage the show but take the lead and see that you can actually transform so many people so tell me about that you know I mean how did when did that start in your life and how did you take that forward you know I mean that was something I am still trying to take it in because you know it's so easy to just put it in words and listen to that and uh, get the con data you know the stock the, I would I would say I would call the story the data you know my this is program is story to Satori so that is that is a story you know that's the data but then actual learning happens when you take in and you 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 actually absorb it in a way that you you're not uh, blown away you know un, uh, out of proportion but then you are actually balanced you are grounded and uh, you can actually uh, take control of the situation. You use certain words, you know, I, I wish I had written those words. Um, I wish you remember it still. Uh, one is, of course, uh, you have given me, uh, I think, uh, today is something which is very awesome because it's going in for me and uh, and it is actually getting absorbed. And uh, it's, a, it's such a nice, enlightening situation here right now, Pooja. And uh, pretty overwhelming at the same time. Uh, I want to others also who are seeing watching this program uh, to, to understand that a human be being goes through so much and there are many ways to deal with that you know one is of course to get kind of bogged down by that whole situation get overwhelmed and get um, carried away by our emotions because 22 is a young age right At least, especially in our culture in India and we have we have our fathers uh, so much of our uh, uh, concern coming in it's like a, a big shade under which we are uh, protected and uh, we are uh, we have so much of uh, love coming from that so how did you go about um, and get into this kind of a person who has blossomed into such a nice holistic individual because when I read your uh, you're talking about wellness, you're talking about parenting in your uh, blogs and you're talking about, uh, uh, you know, leadership, you're talking about, uh, you're doing so many things which I'm sure, you know, is going to transform a whole lot of people there. So why don't you talk about that and tell us, share that journey. So, Janvi, yes, it has been a journey of, um, of transformation actually because, uh, it has been a journey of transformation when I say from fear to focus, you know. Uh, yeah, from from feeling like, uh, why is it happening to me? Am I not good enough to be blessed with good things? To focusing and being, uh, you know, not letting the other people be your yardstick, but each day striving to be a better version of self. So, it has been a journey overall. Yes, I would say a journey in the thoughts, in the beliefs. And that's what it comes into your um, into your action, you know. Because I always, my various life scenarios, what I have, what I have uh, been thrown to or what has been my growth learning curve. So they have taught me that, uh, you know, it, it is only 20% which is something which is not in your control. But 80% it is your mindset. You write in your stories here and that's what it becomes your reality. So when I lost my dad, obviously I was like shattered. And I was like, why the hell it had to happen to me? Hmm. I mean, I'll tell you very honestly, the very first thought was there are so many age. I mean, with all due respect, 
but there are so many age old people mm-hmm. i mean who have really passed on their age and who are like you know why is this happening only to me when my mother needs my dad my my brother was 10 years younger to me we need him so much why is it yes. happening to me and that's the time when you see sometimes you know uh, that's the time when you realize that in life people are for either for a reason or for a season you know because you see that people start changing sometimes they start distancing yourself and the entire thing got me so one is you mature chronologically mm. and second thing is you mature mentally fast so i got matured mentally very fast because of all those things but in the entire thing um, there used to be a constant fight used which used to happen mentally for quite some time mm. and i saw it resulted into an angry puja a puja mm. used to be like very angry puja who wouldn't trust people easily and that's what not i was mm. i was getting transformed to something else and that's where you that's where you know then i was like it's not serving me anyway it's it's not taking me to where i want to be mm. and they all the emerging emerging from the fear because fear of losing fear of not being uh, you know people suddenly start be- behaving difficult and that's what now you know got me thinking that people are not typical they are different it is just yes it's just the way this life situation so what really helped me during that time was first of all you know we try to run away from this kind of situations hmm. and the first thing what i did was all this while i was trying to run away which was not serving hmm. i tried to treat them as a person like okay come on you know i started journaling started writing down whatever my my story was like whatever i i used to write pages and pages you know really pour my heart out hmm. okay it was to some extent was okay because you are like pouring your heart out but still it was not serving me mm. because each when you just say okay man the life is not good then uh, then i moved to the next level after pouring my heart out i was mm. like what i need to move forward mm. what is exciting for me in future mm. so when i started looking at that you know the outlook slowly and steadily started changing when i started practicing gratitude because when my mom was been uh, diagnosed with cancer that's that's the time i was expecting my second kid hmm. so i was not been allowed in any chemotherapy because obviously you know, it's not allowed you know and as i told you my brother was 10 years younger to me so my mom used to be in the chemotherapy inside and i used to wait out and that's the time um, when my husband was moving countries as well okay. so it was a very very difficult time so there are two ways either one way is like you really get bogged down by it mm. and you see like why the hell is it happening a second thing is like come on you ride over it and you say like when the life gets difficult and it stops me i'll try and give it a fight and give the tough the tough going yeah. <laughs> so that it starts going and that's what i did um, so the practical tools if i need to say one is like uh, moving the transition from fear to focus mm. was one second was was um, writing down the third one was expressing the gratitude mm. and the fourth thing is which has some linkage to the first point of fear is mm. sometimes you know there are situations which are not real but you build it in your mind because yeah, of that fear is a yes. uh, stories what we start building in yes so you, you know for example when my mom was diagnosed with cancer i was like oh god if she dies then Oh God! If she's not going to be with me, then so mm-hmm. all those were like emerging from the fear because I think the fear of losing someone, loved yes. one, is the greatest fear. If we conquer that, mm-hmm. I think things. So I started looking at the story, like you know, writing it down, and then trying to see like what are the facts and what are the stories when I'm building around it. Okay. So the moment you start, uh, the way you used, you know, you call your stories to be data. So yeah. I call it to be a conscious transformation which happened to me mm. a blend of science and art in it. <laughs> wow. That is awesome because you have being in the HR probably and also person who's done a lot of self work. I mean that is your motivation, right? Each person has their own motivation to grow and achieve things in life and yours was coming from the space of um I'm not going to give up 
and I'm going to ride on the way of how I can, you know, give the tough life, you know, be, be becoming tough with that life of yours. And as you said, the four tools I think all of us need to take heed of is one is, of course, expressing through your gratitude and then writing it down in journaling because as you said, you know, you could bifurcate, see clearly what is the, I call it data and you call it conscious, uh, you know, kind of consciously uh, uh, attending to what is true and what is reality and what is story, what is Satori and what is the story. And the third one was uh, you started, uh, um, uh, the, what was the third one you said? Um, you said I said spoke about uh, journaling. journaling, I spoke about gratitude. Gra First is the awareness. You become yes. aware about the yes. emotions. Mm. Run away. Yeah. Because you run away, they will keep on chasing you. Yes. Then you express gratitude. The third is you try and look out at what is the story and what is the fact. What is the fact? So you, you start bifurcating those. Yes. And then so it's like happens with the writing. And Pardon? The last one? It, it's, the con it's the conscious transformation which conscious happens when you find the Yes. It's the conscious transformation. Yes. And the best part you spoke up about was the model that you have created, Pooja. I really want to acknowledge you. Fear to focus, right? I mean, it is a coaching model that I think we can, you can create and I can also follow that <laughs> model. In fact, I'm already following it, but that is the whole thing. You know, we have fear. Everybody has fear in life. You know, one thing that I think I am taking away from your con this conversation is we all have fear, fear of losing, fear of failing, fear of many things, you know, you know, fear of the future. But then if you really look, um, you know, what happens is when we are in that fear zone, we just lose our focus of things. We, we just can't take action at, at all. You know, in fact, we are kind of, we are in a stuck situation. And we as coaches, you and me, we have helped so many people who have unconsciously got stuck in the situation just because of the fear. And we also go through that as human beings, you know, we are not, uh, we have come from the Absolutely. same source. And all the time, if we can work on that area of uh, addressing that fear, like you did, and you wrote it down, and, uh, and that is something you're fortunate to have uh, done it all by yourself and without a coach, but not everybody can do that. And when you started writing it down and started looking at that story and then that uh, the light in that, the wisdom and uh, all the, no you could take it as golden nuggets and apply it, take actions in your life. And the best part I liked about you was, uh, you told me about the seeds that were sown by your mother. And uh, somewhere, you know, it was done in a very young age and those were the ones which manifested when you started growing up. Absolutely. And you could handle all that stuff that we all go through, but it, it becomes almost like, you know, late age till we realize it or maybe we never realize it and we just, we die before we realize these things. So uh, I'm really so grateful that you came on to this sto story to Satori show and uh, I'm sure many have taken uh, and will take this uh, learning from here. I'm going to use it myself. I'm going to write there on the board, you know, fear to focus. I'm doing it already, but then I'll put it in block, big block letters and... Uh, uh, oh, gratitude, gratitude, Jaggi. Gratitude, I, yes. really, yeah. I really appreciate the kind of work you do and uh, it's a mutual admiration. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I love this space, you know, I love this and it gives me a lot of fulfillment and... Uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, when there is gratitude, there is more that will be given to us from this universe to be more, to be more grateful for, right? Absolutely. And, yes. Uh, so and your I'm, stories are helping people to emerge from a victim mode to get into the victorious mode, you know, because absolutely. most of the time we feel like my story is different. But I think each one of us, we have our own challenges. It's our choice uh, that we want to be sulking about it in a victim mode or we want to be a victor <laughs> yes wonderful and uh, you have actually kind of paraphrased it and uh, you know uh, said it so do you want to be a victim or do you want to be a victor you know victory so yes. you write your script you can always Absolutely. write rewrite your script 
so i'm looking forward uh, to meeting you sometime and uh, i'm sure you, you you keep coming to india often you're going to come very soon i'm sure for the absolutely conference. looking forward yeah. looking forward to looking meet forward. you so thank you so much and uh, really grateful thank for you. you thank you thank you thank you so much thank you bye bye all right thank you